If you're thinking about making the move to Canton, Michigan, or just want to get a sense of what this Southeast Michigan city is like, I highly suggest you stick around so you can hear all about why you should move here and maybe why you shouldn't. Let's get to it. For those of you that don't know, Canton is a charter township located east of Ann Arbor and west of Detroit. It's 36.14 square miles in size with a population of around 100,000 people. The question that often arises is, why do people want to live there? And why do people want to leave there? So let's start with why people want to live there. Kicking this list off with the first reason, and that's the cost of living, specifically home prices. As you may or may not know, the pandemic has created chaos in the housing market. And with inflation, along with bidding wars and multiple offer scenarios, people are desperately trying to find a place to call home that's actually affordable. And oftentimes, Canton is brought up in that conversation. This is something I have experienced firsthand. I have had several buyers who jumped over to Canton simply due to the fact that they could stretch their dollar a little further. Taking a look at this graph provided by the MLS, it will actually contradict my point about affordability, but bear with me here. This graph shows the average sale price over the last three years with Canton in yellow and the MLS as a whole in blue. As you can see, Canton comes in much higher than average by nearly $100,000, which was a 3.4% increase year over year, bringing the total just to about 388,000. As of right now, there are 86 homes on the market, ranging from a $140,000 two bedroom, one bathroom condo that was built in 1973 to a $1.475 million home with four bedrooms, one and a half bathrooms built in 1903. So it's safe to say Canton has a fairly diverse selections of homes out there. Most of my clients fell into the 250 to $450,000 range and have found that the amenities Canton offered, along with the size and features these homes offered, outweighed homes in other nearby communities for the same price, and I'd have to agree. But I noticed several people noticed that as well. So within the last few years, Canton was always that line out the door, secretary of state feeling, every time you booked a showing due to its increasing popularity, which is something that should be heavily considered when choosing a new community, especially in a market where you're purchasing homes at a premium. Despite the price tag on this community being higher, I wanted to share what the buyer behavior has been lately and where they have been leaning toward to stretch their dollar. With that being said, it brings us into point number two, and that's the future outlook and economy. If you ever spent some time driving through or researching the township of Canton, you'd find out real quickly that housing opportunities are popping up everywhere. There's new condo communities, single family homes, there's small businesses that are continuing to pop up in the area despite there being a surplus of big box retailers and its location with great access to highways and all the nearby cities such as Ann Arbor, Detroit, Plymouth, the airports, and of course the one and only Ikea store, which if you didn't know, is not a very common offering in Michigan, so this is almost an attraction when it comes to visiting Canton. Before I switch gears to the next pro, I wanted to Take a deeper dive into Canton's economy just to give you a better perspective. This graph provided by bestplaces.net shows the unemployment rate for Canton at 5.6%, whereas the average in the United States is 6%. The recent job growth has dropped below 10%, which actually doesn't surprise me because Canton isn't one of those places that is attractive for their job opportunities. More times than not, residents are traveling to other nearby cities and metro areas for work. And the plus side to this is, is Canton is pretty close to all those opportunities. The future job growth is sitting at 35%, which is a smidge higher than the average. Then we jump down to sales tax, income tax, and the average household incomes. One of the big takeaways from people I helped relocate to Michigan and specifically to Canton is that their reaction to the town is often the same and I didn't really appreciate it until I traveled to Wisconsin not too long ago. As I drove through, I couldn't help but be observant of this town that I've never really been to before. And I thought to myself, if they would just spend some extra time sprucing up the town, cutting the grass, pulling the weeds, power washing or repainting their storefronts, this town would be completely different in the best way possible. All that just to say that Canton is the opposite because they definitely spend a significant amount of time and energy to keep the area clean and well maintained. And I think this point is often underrated because it could just as easily be the reverse. There are several cities and townships throughout Southeast Michigan that neglect this type of maintenance and you can't help but drive through and think, 
yeah, I'm definitely not calling this place my home. And I don't want you to get it twisted. I'm not saying I base a city to live in on the city's lawn service skills. I just think it has a direct correlation to how the area is ran by its local government as a whole. And if they are neglecting that task, what other larger tasks are they neglecting too? You want to be proud of where you live, not just the home you purchase, but the community your home sits in. The last point I want to touch on before I make a transition to the not so good things about Canton, and that's the community in regard to location, neighborhoods, and city offerings. Throwing in a few of these current and past resident reviews, it's safe to say that the community that has been established in the township of Canton is one that is appreciated by the residents more than it is hated. I've chatted with several people who have moved to Canton as well as gathered some reviews and a lot of them don't necessarily move there for what Canton offers, but what the nearby cities offer. Take that for what it is, but people park their family in this township and venture out to other areas. In terms of Canton's community, there's often this misconception based on how the city is laid out that there couldn't possibly be any sense of community and a good indicator on whether that is true or not is by taking a look at local event calendars. Several of them have the bare minimum or nothing at all or they have a fair mix like Canton which I will link in the description for you. Anything from Cherry Hill Village Festival, Brews, Brats and Bands, Artoberfest and all the Halloween, Thanksgiving and winter holiday events too. Canton also has a lot of attractions as well. It by no means is a lake town but it has a lot of opportunities to do several activities and I will put that link in the description to break that down for you. All right, switching to the not so good things about living in Canton, starting off with con number one, we have the one and only Ford Road. I have experienced Ford Road, my clients have experienced Ford Road, and any negative review that I can possibly find online from current and past residents all tie back to Ford Road. Remember earlier when I said there's a bunch of housing communities in Canton, small businesses popping up places, and people realizing that Canton is actually a pretty good place to live? Well, with all that being said, traffic becomes the result of all those positives. For those of you that don't know, Ford Road is a main vein of Canton where the majority of businesses are, and it's also conveniently used by everyone, even non-residents, for east and west travel and you add some school buses to all that along with some semis delivering goods to all the businesses and you have yourself a full-blown train wreck. When you're driving in Canton, it's inevitable that you need to drive on Ford Road and you just need to accept that it comes with a lot of traffic. I'm sure the people out there in the metro areas across all the different states will probably laugh and say, you call this traffic? My answer is yes, our population density could line one of your blocks if that. The next kind to think about, and I wanna make sure I preface this with don't let it be the reason you don't move to Canton. I simply wanna raise awareness so if you do purchase a home there, you take your due diligence period serious to avoid future issues, and that is the flooding issue. I promise you I'm not just basing this off our recent large storms that we had, but it was a good time to raise some awareness because some Canton residents were kayaking down the street, but over the years there have been a few storms that have caused major flooding on the streets and basements. Whether it's from sewer backups on the street, in your home, sump pump failures, or a foundation that could use some sealing or fringe draining to divert the water, it's important to understand what could happen plan for the worst and hope for the best. Make sure the downspouts are pulling water far away from the foundation. I actually had a, a listing recently with a downspout that disconnected during a big storm and water actually had started leaking in through the roof since it had no other place to go. A lot of these basement floods occur when some pumps fail and there's no backup to kick on and the water backflows. Again, I don't want to single out Canton here because it's heavily situational in how the owners of the home prepared for these situations. I just wanna raise awareness when you're buying a home in general. Another kind to keep in mind is yes, home prices can be affordable in today's standard, depending on what you're looking for in Canton, but the property taxes can be a little sneaky. Canton's property taxes aren't way off the charts compared to other comparable communities in Southeast Michigan, but from time to time, I like to show how to calculate these, as I, I have in several of my other videos, so you can be as informed as possible. I have several clients bring this up when moving to Canton, so I wanted to make sure I touched on this. I'll also link a document that displays all the millage rates in all the townships, cities, and counties in Michigan from 2022, since the 2023 one is not released yet. 
Keep in mind, these millage rates may have fluctuated a few points, so use this as a general guideline, not so much the end figure. A mill is equal to $1 of tax for every $1,000 of taxable value. So for example, I searched up Canton, Michigan's millage rate and found that for a primary residence, we are sitting at around 40 mills. You would take one one thousandth of that millage rate, which would be 0 0.04, and multiply it by the taxable value. Taxable value increases from year to year by the rate of inflation or 5%, whichever is lower. I always aim to calculate property taxes on the high side just so you can again plan for the worst and hope for the best. So we would take 50% of that sale price of the home or whatever it's listed at. In this example, I'll say the home is listed at $300,000. So the number would be $150,000. Then multiply it by 0 0.04 and an estimated tax amount would be about $6,000. If you're looking for a better estimate, feel free to contact the local assessor's office in the community where the home is located. The last kind I'll talk about is the lack of downtown space and as I mentioned Ford Road is a home to the majority of restaurants, businesses, and attractions in Canton. Similar to my videos about Highland and White Lake, they are all situated on the M59 corridor which is a 55 plus mile an hour road and Ford Road gives off that same feeling of being just this busy strip. So when people think of downtown, they venture over to small towns like Northville, Plymouth or Ann Arbor. So if that small town atmosphere is, is something that you're looking for, Canton is not that. But on the plus side of things, each subdivision within Canton tends to be its own little community. Several of them end in a cul-de-sac where you'll see children play or people come together and chat. So despite the lack of a physical downtown, that sense of community is still there like I mentioned. For those of you that have watched until now, what are your thoughts about Canton, Michigan? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you ever need help buying, selling, or investing in Michigan, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to be your go-to resource. Thank you as always for watching. If this video provided you some value, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Tap that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you're notified every single time I come out with a new video. Until next time.